Well, I mean, I think they can. Uh, I, I don't think they've got an alternative because she loses any more. I think that, you know... That Someone's got to carry to the can for this. And it can't be her. Well, that will be her calculation. Well, I, well, I don't know. I mean, no. Because nobody... There is no resigning issue at the moment, is there? So nobody resigns over anything. You can say anything you like pretty much. Well, they much, do. They, they did eventually like. resign over Boris Johnson's moral corruption and dishonesty. Eventually. Yeah, yeah, I think. But it wasn't many of the cabinet, was it? It was all the sort of... No, it was. It was. It started, with, it started with Sajid Javid and Rishi Sunak. Their, 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 yeah, their letters started... Yeah. the. No, you can't just say, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's directly contradicting what you just said out loud, John. No, so I that's know, what I that's I'm, what I'm, it would I'm, take. That's what it would I'm take. Just try, I'm just trying to think think that bit through. But mm. I, I think what I think what will happen in, in the in the short term, she will try and, and move on. But I think there will be a sort of coalesce, but rather like they did with Ian Duncan Smith. Um, I mean, they got rid of him pretty sharpish, and then they sort of coalesced around Michael Howard. Mm. I think there will be. I think there will be another candidate. There won't be an election. There won't be uh, that time to, to go for an, uh, you know another leadership election. Mm. But I think what will happen is they will coalesce around an individual who will sort of spring up out of nowhere. Just somebody like Ben Wallace, I, I guess. Uh, he didn't fancy like it that. last time, but that doesn't mean he wouldn't fancy it next time, does it? No, I no, I think I think there's, there's a lot of there's, very there's ambitious people around, though. There's a lot of very ambitious people, are, and and, yeah. and and you know, persuading them to step back for the good of the party. Yeah. Uh, let alone the good of the country, would demand yeah. quite a large change of priorities Absolutely. from what they've displayed over the last few years, wouldn't it? Absolutely. I, I don't think... I mean, what should happen is that now there should be... The show, obviously, we'd all love a general election right now. But well. um, I, I, I don't think we've got enough... Uh, Conservative MPs with a with a spine or with a brain actually to actually put, put that one forward. I think they're all too worried about losing their seats at the next general election. But that's when the self interest kicks in, isn't it? And I, I guess in many ways, both of my questions now address the question of when does that self interest kick in on a nuclear level? When do they start acting in a way that is essentially designed to minimise the very large chance of losing huge numbers of seats, including their own? Uh, the next election, the way the polls are sitting at the moment, you could not, you, I mean, you'd have to be sitting on a majority of, of biblical proportions in order to be even vaguely confident that you were going to hang on to your seat. I can't personally imagine that staying, um, that situation staying, but neither can I see how Liz Trust really makes a meaningful change to it. 33 is the maximum we've seen so far, but if you take the averages around a 25-point lead, it'd be very interesting to see whether or not that starts coming down soon. You'd think that gravity would start applying, but not necessarily. And and I don't know what happens next, but I do know, or at least I, I'm fairly confident that something has to give because this is on... I, I believe this is unsustainable, but I don't know what will give and I don't know what it will look like, which is why I'm asking you. Toby's in Portsmouth. Toby, what would you like to say? Hi, James. Yeah, so it, what's going to happen next is I don't see how the party can stick with her, but I don't see how they will, if there's enough enough people who aren't, you know, gonna, who, who would be uh, willing to vote against her and try and remove her from leadership. So it's as if everybody knows that she should go, but no one is prepared to wield the knife. Yeah, no one wants to be the first one to... That to, was true to, with Johnson as well, wasn't it? Until, mm-hmm. Jav- until Javid and Sunak jumped ship. Yeah, and absolutely, and it's it's they they need someone to kind of step up and be the first one because it's 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 crazy. Like you, you know, thirty three. You said thirty three points in, the, in yeah, some polls. Just that, one you know, unprecedented. It is, and I mean, everyone you know, everyone in the Red Wall, uh, former Red Wall seats, has got to be feeling very they're very. Lost. I think they're lost. Yeah, I think I think those votes have gone now. I think that the the, the it, oddly the 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 rhetoric of the tax cut for the top earners is going to really land forever, oh, even I'm... though even though they've abandoned it. Are you a member? Are, are you you I sound am. too young. You're a member. Sorry, that was patronising of me. You're a member of the Tory party. <laughs> talk me I'm through what young. you You're think. Quite right. <laughs> talk me through what you think has happened. How how this has happened? How this could, such an enormous catastrophe has come upon so quickly? It's a decadence to a degree, but it's Gosh. it's it's complacency more than anything else. You, you you spend you know any party that spends X amount of years in power mm. is gonna you know is gonna start to get very complacent. Feel like they you know, they're untouchable. You know we had uh, after after Brexit and yeah you know, whatever whatever we want to think of that, we've had 
we've had Bob Johnson, who whose government was uh, hammered uh, yeah. by the COVID nineteen, which you know, give give him that give the man his credit there. He managed to not absolutely uh, uh, make a make a pig's ear off. Mm. But then I, I, I let that pass because I'm looking at the clock. But I I, 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 don't, I don't know that that's a given. But I mean the. The self-inflicted. Well, maybe it could have been worse, but it's, it's hard to imagine how the self-inflicted injuries yes. of Boris Johnson's premiership. I'm afraid are inarguable. They weren't down to oh, complacency. No, they were down to personal corruption, moral absolutely. corruption. Absolutely, exactly. And that's that's not that's not what this country needs right now, and it's not what the party needs right now. The party needs to to find someone who is. I mean, I would you know, Rory Stewart is on the radio. Right he's now. not he, even a Tory he, anymore, technically. I speaking. know exactly, but when we, you know, when he was, he is, he is such just a crazy to think that he he used to be a member of the Conservative so Party. So when, when you dis- at, you join the party, you're a Conservative member. You see yourself as closer to, to to Rory Stewart than you do to any of the current cabinet. Yeah, I am. I am very much more kind of the. Okay. Of the I, you're I'm the a, future. At yeah, least you I mean, hope you're the future, yeah. but I can't see the party that so. you join. I don't think the party you joined exists anymore, or the party that no, you think you're a member of exists anymore. It's no, it does. It's it's a very different party, yeah. and it's it's very surprisingly just shifted to the ra- <laughs> the realms of fan- fantasy. Yes, and that's it, isn't it? It's not even you, you, you know lurched to the right would not be quite the right description. It's 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 lurched to the realms of fantasy. That must yeah, be quite odd for you to, 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 as someone who clearly takes his politics very seriously. This must be quite odd for you to watch. It does, and and you know, I'm, I, I was talking to my father, and I said, "This yeah. is it, it, this is certainly the most unstable government I've lived through, yeah. most unstable period of politics in my lifetime." And he agreed. It's you know, and he's lived through for you know, coming sixty odd years, mm. and lived through many governments, and this is this is the most chaotic he's seen in British politics and it, it, it's worrying because what, what happens like, well, that, I mean, we're all it, on the same page oddly I mean I think worrying is, mm. is possibly an understatement and, and uh, arguably so is chaotic But it, and, and what is astonishing and I know you'll know this and I'm sure your old man agrees is the speed with which they've done it. And I know you speak of, of complacency even decadence creeping into a 12 year old administration or a 12 year old uh, uh, grip on power. I, that's probably the only bit I disagree with you about. They, they they see themselves almost as 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 new. Does the whole we said it's a new government, and I know they're not technically, and there must be some truth in what you say, but they don't. I I, I don't know if that analysis quite works. This it might explain how you've ended up just going getting progressively worse prime ministers from. I well, know I suppose that's unfair on Theresa May, but from Cameron to. Johnson to trust, but the the reason for it can't be a kind of atrophying. It's because this these are people who passionately believe in what they're doing, allegedly, even though what they're doing is so obviously crackers. Thank you, Toby, and thank you for ringing in as well. Um, always a warm welcome for, for 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 people who sing from very different political hymn sheets, unless you you you, you talk nonsense, in which case I will pointed out, but neither Toby nor Chris in Maidstone spoke any nonsense at all. Conservative members, they're sharing just this overall sense of wonder at what's happening, although with slightly different, well, very different conclusions about what is likely to happen next. I cannot see this surviving for two years, and I don't think many Tories can either, but as Toby tells us, it becomes ultimately a question of who's going to break ranks first. 11.47 is the time. PMQs is on the way. Theo Usherwood joins me after this. 11.52 11.52 is the time. So we have a new feature on the programme. It's very nascent. It doesn't have any uh, uh, what, what, jingling. Jingling? What's the correct word? It doesn't have a jingle yet or a kind of stab or something. I, 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 I toyed with the idea of calling it Theo Time, but no one except me found that amu- amusing. Or Do you know I'm quite nervous about this? Do you know why I'm nervous about this? No. Because everything we've always done, yeah. it's, it's never been pre-planned. There's never, it's just always sort of happened. Yeah. And now we're planning something. Yeah. I'm not comfortable with it. This is not good. Uh, I'm not comfortable This is only the third one. <laughs> I know. It's the anyway, second one since you, we thought yester- it might become a regular feature. Yesterday you tested me. And yes. I hate to say it, but I... I Hang on. I'm doing some something... banter about the name of it. Political... What was it? Theory? The or? producer likes political theory. Okay. Do you not? So, 
it's okay. I like the political theory. Yeah. Theology, theology doesn't that sound silly? Because it'd be all religious. Political theory, I quite okay. like. It's oh, growing we'll go on. With that. Go with that. Politi then. Can we do a song? Can we get a little song? It needs po a jingle. Political theory. Ding ding ding. Chris often is the is, is the man. man. I don't know if looks he's after us. He he's after us very well. Before. He's a guitar playing taxi driver. He's in a he's new band. Mm. Do you know that? No, no. Yeah. Yeah. Keep I keep tabs on these people. Anyway, so yesterday you tested me. I did, and I passed. Did you? Yeah, yes, yeah, you yeah, did. I did. You know the humble bread, I don't, I don't James, know. We yeah. didn't agree this in advance, Theo. <laughs> right. So now it's to. Okay. You, you, you were on. You were on Celebrity Mastermind. Mastermind. How did up. you? I haven't done it yet. I recorded okay. it in a couple of months. Okay. So would you like to start with the choice today is between three Conservative MPs? Well, and you'll name Each an MP, and I'll name the story. Yeah. Okay. And is it proper stories or just Twitter? No, I think. They're, I mean, I well, one's Twitter. Three, two proper stories. All right. Go on. I'll, I'll take all three. Okay, Marcus Jones. No idea. The MP for Nuneaton. No idea. Next. David Davis. Yep, he's talking about R&D funding yeah. being removed. I've already covered that on the programme. And he, David Davis, is suggesting that this would be appalling for growth. That's okay. David right, Davis. So you've got one out no two deal so Brexit would be absolutely fine. He's suddenly discovered enmity towards things that are anti-growth. So so you've one. got one out of two. And then Boris Johnson. No. I'll just choose the middle one, please. Uh, right, well, we'll go... <laughs> Yeah, you, one out of three. Start let's with go, Marcus Jones. Let's go with Marcus Jones. He he is the MP for Nuneaton. Yes. He was in the levelling up uh, department as a junior minister until Liz Truss took over. He then lost his job because, of course, uh, Liz Truss, when she appointed her ministerial team, uh, cabinet ministers and all the way down, uh, focused on those who had supported her during the summer leadership campaign. So the likes of uh, Grant Shapps was told that whilst he was a good communicator, uh, he would not be able to keep his job as the Transport Secretary. And Marcus Jones, surprise, surprise, supported Rishi Sunak. He uh, said on the 19th of July that he thought that the former Chancellor had the skills and experience to deliver on crime, cost of living, Brexit and levelling up. And uh, that he believes it was a matter to the people. Yeah. It mattered to the people of Nuneaton and across the country, uh, ready for Rishi. Well, today, Marcus Jones has got a big new job. Ah. He is now going to be the new parliamentary private secretary to none other than Liz Truss. Yeah. And it's a really, it's a really important. Hasn't Greg job. Hand's been given away back in as well. Yeah, he's been given. He's been given Connor Burns' so old this job. Is, if you like a U-turn on the none of. None of Rishi's people will be allowed in my Very team. instructive about yeah. the support now, uh, the reliance now on ensuring that Conservative backbenchers who weren't necessarily supportive of her administration to start off with or over the campaign... Because they're now all very ambitious. In. And the idea that the path to promotion had been shut for them already because they'd failed to support Liz Truss is actually quite dangerous for her. But it's not just it's not just about, you're quite right on that, but it's not just about necessarily their own personal ambitions. It's about Liz Truss having a way back into the Conservative Party or parts of the Conservative Parliamentary Party where, Parliamentary Party, where she had no access because everybody yeah. was sceptical about her ability to do the job in the first place. A, a PPS is integral to the functioning of uh, a good relationship between Number 10 and the back benches. Gavin Williamson did it for mm. uh, uh, David Cameron, then got made uh, chief whip by uh, Theresa May. So that's uh, it's instructive. I think that uh, a Rishi Sunak supporter has been given this job. You can say, well, it's a bad carrier, but actually, no, it's, it's a is significant potentially, appointment. It's potentially I should mention at eleven fifty-six that we will be crossing live to PMQs at twelve p.m. or shortly thereafter. So there'll be no bulletin at twelve noon. And then I think, given the febrile nature of politics at the moment, we'll do some post-match analysis of PMQs this week, not just with Theo, but also with you. So I want you to bear in mind while listening to PMQs, which is available on the Global Player actually, if you want to see the. The, the whites of their eyes while they're while they're talking. Um, while you're listening to it this week, do bear in mind that I'll be inviting your thoughts on it after PMQs has concluded. Um, what's the Boris Johnson story? Right. So Boris Johnson, I need to get the date exactly right. On the sixth of September, resigned as Prime Minister. Now there are some rules. That's not really a scoop. No. No. Just this isn't a scoop. This is actually this is somebody else who picked up on this. So oh. I'm just I'm just I'll be honest. I think it's September. I think it's interesting. Yeah. So there are rules set by ACOBA, which is the committee uh, on business appointments for former ministers and indeed uh, civil servants, that says that uh, if you are leaving your post as a government minister, you can't have a uh, regular job for three months after you leave your job. Right. Boris Johnson hmm. has just done a speech uh, in Colorado. 
Of course he has. Uh, for which he's been paid, and this is according, and props where it's due, to uh, the Guido Fawkes website, he's been paid $150,000 uh, for the speech um, which he presented, and every, apparently it went very down went down very well in the audience. Now, if you go to the ACOBA rules, and I've been to the ACOBA rules, they state that, there, as I said, there must be a w minimum waiting period of three months from the date of leading office to taking up an appointment or employment. Now, there is a get out. There is a get out, which means that one-off activities such as speeches, broadcasts or new newspaper articles uh, do not necessarily class themselves, cannot necessarily class as appointments or em ap employment. Mm. OK. However, Go on, quickly. Boris Johnson's very, sorry, very quickly, Boris Johnson's actually taken up a gig with the Premium Speakers Agency. So it tricky, is. Tricky, tricky that. So he's actually got touting a regular trade. gig. He's touting for trade, but he won't be getting a regular income from the Premium Speakers Agency. So that no, might, that so might I, be a get I out. I have been, I have been on to, I have been on to his, I have been on to him. I think I'm his with as well. What? Nothing. So you think you? No. Okay. I'm with what? one agency. Yeah, but but you don't so, get any money off them unless they do a booking for you. So that wouldn't count as a job. But if you're if you're registered with oh, an I agency, think you're barking up the wrong tree here, mate. You think isn't it, you don't yeah. like it? Well, I don't. It's not well, that anyway, I don't like on, it. I think you can give a speech, think, and you can have an agent setting up speeches for you. That's not a job. Well, anyway, I've been on to his Go on. To, to find out whether he registered it or went through yeah. COBA firstly. I haven't yet received a reply. When well, I do receive watch a reply. this space. I could be wrong, but I wouldn't have thought having you think an he's agent. A... Well, look, imagine you were a radio presenter and you mm. had an agent, mm -hmm. but you also didn't have any work. You'd still have an agent and you'd be unemployed. Yes, I suppose so. And, it, and, and even if you've got an agent and he gets you some work, it's only when he gets you work that you're getting paid. The act of having an agent doesn't count as employment no but it would be you would be within the you think we'll see within, won't we? we'll, we'll find see. out anyway okay. pmq is about to start uh 12 focus noon. on the economy 12 also... has just turned just brief before that indian trade deal under threat this was yes. one of liz truss's greatest achievements it's on the verge of collapse according to the times after indian ministers reacted furiously to suella braverman's comments mm. well uh, the home secretary one hour one <laughs> So Ella Bravman's comments, um, uh, of course, saying that she th didn't like the idea or didn't want um, uh, people coming to work in this country from India, migrants coming to work in this country from India to bring their family members. She went further. She said, I, I, uh, the largest group of people who overstay are Indians. I do have some reservations. Look at migration in this country. The largest number of people who overstay are Indians. I mean, it's illustrative also, before it p p potentially banjacks one of Liz Truss's laughable deals, uh, sorry, flagship trade deals, it, it also highlights that, that dissent will be tolerated in this cabinet. She's got no yeah. choice but to tolerate dissent. But the other, the other thing about this is that from the Indian government's point of view, this was absolute, the I, migration was absolutely integral to doing a deal with the UK. So yes. when, we, when we left the European Union and went to India, and this is different from other countries we've done deals with, mm. we went to India, they were saying, okay, fine, we'll do a trade deal with you, but in return, this is what we want. We want uh, easier flows of, uh, e easier visa requirements between India and the UK. That was an integral part of the deal. Of so suddenly the Home Secretary turning around and saying, well, actually, we want to shut the door on this. Yeah, the trade would, deal would, falls apart. Yes, exactly. And of because course, all those people who voted wanted. for Brexit because there were too many brown people behind the tills at Sainsbury's are, 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 are going to be feeling both betrayed and even stupider than usual while also basking in the warm glow of their own racism. Now, Liz Truss is on her feet. She'll be taking questions from Keir Starmer very shortly. But afterwards, there is going to be an urgent question from Rachel Reeves, the Shadow Chancellor. Should we stay for that? What time it's, will that be? Th that'll be roughly 12.30. Yeah, it might, we'll, we'll, we'll dip in and out, shall we, in a cool and maverick way. OK. Uh, As quasi if we're rewriting the rules of political quasi, broadcasting quasi, while quasi, live on the radio. Quasi Quatang, I don't think we'll be uh, responding. It will oh. be probably left to Chloe Chris Phil. No, Chris Phil, Phil the Sorry. Chief Secretary to the Treasury. So quite a lot to look forward to. What do you think? I mean, he's just going to go in on the mini budget. The government's line the is that the reaction to the mini budget has nothing to do with the mini budget. If I hadn't heard Jacob Rees-Mogg <laughs> actually attempt to argue that this morning, I wouldn't even have believed they'd attempt it. But well, that is the, the government line. The reaction to the mini budget has nothing to do with the mini budget. And of course, the cost of government borrowing has gone through 5% today. And the Bank of England has said explicitly that it is down to the mini budget. <laughs> I mean that I mean, uncharted waters doesn't even cover it. Does but, it? but 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 it, I'd imagine, and I might be proven wrong, but I'd imagine Keir Stummer would be trying to weave a narrative during this PMQs about what it mat why it matters to people 
uh, who are trying to get mortgages, who are going to see their costs, um, their costs just shoot shoot through the roof as they're coming off either fixed rates onto variable rates, uh, and what it means for what it means for them. Mm. Right. I mean, to to clarify, and Lewis Goodall's got a rather j- j- clever thread about this um, on Twitter at the moment. It, of course, there are global issues. Interest rates mm. are rising. Markets are adjusting to the end of the cheap money era. But the mini budget has made everything worse it's 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 exacerbated compounded accelerated magnified all of the problems that that already existed and now time for pmqs Uh, thank you mr speaker can i join with the prime minister and her comments about sir david Uh, she spoke for the whole house when she made those comments and i know uh, how deeply his loss was felt on the opposite benches and we extend our best wishes across at this important time Mr Speaker, I also want to send my heartfelt condolences to the families of all those who tragically lost their lives in Chrysler last week. Donegal is a special place to me and my family and across this House. Uh, The people there are in all of our thoughts. Mr Speaker, this morning the Business Secretary toured the TV studios arguing that the turmoil in the markets has nothing to do with her budget. Does the Prime Minister agree with him? Well, Mr Speaker, what we have done is we have taken decisive action. We have taken decisive action to make sure that people are not facing energy bills of £6,000 for two years. And I think we remember the opposition is only talking about six months. We have also taken decisive action to make sure that we are not facing the highest taxes for 70 years in the face of a global economic slowdown. And what we are making sure is that we protect our economy at this very difficult time internationally and as a result as a result of our action mr speaker and this has been independently corroborated we will see higher growth and lower inflation mr speaker avoiding the question ducking responsibility lost in denial no wonder investors have no confidence in her government and this is why it matters A few weeks ago, Zach and Rebecca from Wolverhampton were all set to buy their first home. Then the government's borrowing spree sent interest rates spiralling and their mortgage offer was withdrawn. I met them last week. They're back to square one, unable to buy, devastated, sick to the back teeth with excuses and blame shifting. Does the Prime Minister understand? why Zach and Rebecca are completely furious with her. Mr Speaker, the fact is that when I came into office, people were facing energy bills of up to £6,000 a year. Well, I'm sorry. Mr Speaker, the party opposite are shouting, but he is opposing the very package that we brought in in energy price guarantee. That was the major part of the mini budget that we announced. And Mr Speaker, he has refused to confirm whether or not he backs our energy price guarantee for two years, which protects families not just this winter, but next winter. What we're seeing, Mr Speaker, is we are seeing interest rates rising globally. We are doing, they are rising globally in the face of Putin's appalling war in Ukraine. And what we are doing is helping people with lower stamp duty, helping people with their energy costs, reducing inflation with our energy package and keeping taxes low. And I notice that the Honourable Gentleman had a Damascan conversion last night when he backed our cut to national insurance. Mr Speaker, the economy is in turmoil. People are really worried. This is really not the time to descend into absolutely nonsense attacks about last night. There's no point. There's no point. There's no point trying to hide it. 
everyone can see what has happened. The Tories went on a borrowing spree, sending mortgage rates through the roof. They are skyrocketing by £500 a month. And for nearly two million homeowners, their fixed rate deals are coming to an end next year. They're worried sick, and everybody in this House knows it. They won't forgive. They won't forget, and nor should they. When will she stop ducking responsibility, do the right thing, and reverse her kamikaze budget, which is causing so much pain? Mr Speaker, last night the Labour Party supported... I want to hear the Prime Minister. I'm sorry if the wrong party doesn't, but I certainly do. <laughs> I'm just, Mr. Speaker, I'm genuinely unclear yeah. about what Labour. Yeah. 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 I think we don't want an early bath at this stage. The Rugby World Cup's coming. Don't start it too soon. Just let's hear the questions and certainly the answers, Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, I'm genuinely unclear as to what as to what the Labour Party's policy is on our energy price guarantee. It was the biggest part. It was the biggest part of our mini budget. Are the opposition saying they want to reverse it and they want to see people facing energy bills of six thousand pounds? Is that what he's saying? Here's Starmer. Mr Speaker, the, the Prime Minister knows very well that on this side we voted against the national insurance in the first place. She, she, she voted for it. So who is doing the U-turn? Honestly, last week the Prime Minister was forced to U-turn on her unfunded tax cut for the super wealthy. This week she's beginning to realise that she needs to extend the windfall tax, yeah. one step behind the CEO of Shell. Yeah. But she's, she's still going ahead with £18 billion of tax cuts for the richest businesses, yeah. and they didn't even ask for it. Yeah. She's still gift-wrapped a stamp duty cut for landlords, just as renters feel the pinch. Mm. And she's still holding out tax cuts for those who live off stocks and shares. Yeah. Why does she expect working people to pick up the bill yeah. for her unfunded tax cuts for those at the top? Yeah. I notice that the Leader of the Opposition is still not saying whether or not he supports our energy price guarantee. This is, this is very relevant, Mr Speaker, because it is the biggest part it is the biggest part of our mini budget. It's the biggest part of the mini budget. The fact is that all the opposition have said is that people should be supported for six months. Does he think that in March pensioners should be facing very high energy bills? Because that's what will happen if he doesn't support our energy price guarantee. Mr Speaker, not even attempting to answer the questions now. I gently remind her that the idea of freezing energy bills was a Labour idea which she then took on. During her leadership contest, the Prime Minister said, and I quote her exactly, I'm very clear, I'm not planning public spending reductions. Is she going to stick to that? Absolutely. Absolutely. Mr Speaker, we are spending we are spending almost a trillion pounds of public spending. We were spending 700 billion back in 2010. What we will make sure is that over the medium term the debt is falling. But we will do that not by cutting public spending, but by making sure we spend public money well. And the honourable gentleman talks about our spending, which he doesn't seem to support on the energy price guarantee. But the reality is he can't criticise us on one hand for spending money, on the other hand claiming we're cutting public expenditure. Yes, they can cheer. I hope they listen very, very carefully to that last answer because other people will listen very, very carefully to it. Who voted 
Uh, who voted for this? Who voted for this? Who voted for this? Not homeowners paying an extra 500 extra on their mortgages. Who voted this? Not working people paying for tax cuts to the largest companies. Who voted for this? Not even most of the MPs behind her who know, who know you can't pay for tax cuts on the never never. Does she think, does she think the public will ever forgive the Conservative Party if they keep on defending this madness and go ahead with a kamikaze budget? Mr Speaker, what our budget has delivered is security security for families for the next two winters. It's made sure that we're going to see higher economic growth, lower inflation and more opportunities. The way that we will get our country growing is through more jobs, more growth, more opportunities, not through higher taxes, higher spending and his friends in the union stopping hard-working people get to work. Cheryl Burnett. Come on, Cheryl. Thank you, Mr Speaker. I want to see growth and jobs in East Cornwall, and I believe an investment zone could help this. Would the Prime Minister back the Honourable Member for North Cornwall and myself who are supporting a zone for Liscard and Bobmin area? Well, I want to see more jobs, more opportunities, more homes for local people in Cornwall. And I know that's what my honourable friend is working towards with her colleagues. And I'm delighted we're bringing forward these investment zones that are going to give those opportunities to local people. We now come to the leader of the SNP, Ian Blackford. Thank you, Mr Speaker. And can I associate myself with the remarks of the Prime Minister on the murder of David Amos a, a year ago? And thoughts and prayers very much with Julia and, and his family. And of course, uh, we think very much of those in Cresla that have been caught up in the terrible tragedy uh, there as well. I would have hoped that if the Prime Minister is making public spending commitments today, that she would have said that those that rely on social security benefits will get their benefits uprated in line with inflation. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mr Speaker, when the the Prime Minister last stood at the dispatch box. The average two-year fixed-rate mortgage stood at 4.5%. They are now at 6.5% and rising, hitting average families with an extra £450 a month of mortgage payments every single month over and above what they were paying. 37 days into the job, this is literally the cost of the Prime Minister's yeah, yeah. incompetence. Yeah, yeah. It is the price households are paying and all because of the Chancellor that she chose. Exactly. Will she now give up her desperate plan to save her Chancellor's skin by scapegoating the Governor of the Bank of England? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Mr Speaker, the action we have taken has meant that families in Scotland and across the United Kingdom are not facing gargantuan energy bills. And what the Honourable Gentleman and his friends in Scotland could do to help us out is build the nuclear power stations that are going to help our energy security, help us get more gas out of the North Sea to help deliver on a more secure energy future for all of our people. Mr Speaker, if she wants to ask us questions, we can swap places. But, you know, the reality is, Mr Speaker, that the Prime Minister is ignoring the damage of the chaos of the mini-budget. She is worrying about saving the Chancellor's job. But many families are now worried not just about heating their homes, but keeping their homes, yeah, Prime yeah, Minister. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The scale of this Tory crisis is frightening. 100,000 households a month are up for mortgage renewals. People can't afford to pay an extra £4,500 a year in interest, and plenty are already falling behind. The Prime Minister and her Chancellor have completely lost control. The only thing growing under this government are mortgages, rents and bills. Is that what she really meant when she declared herself a pro-growth Prime Minister? Well, we have taken action on helping families heat their homes. And that's been very important. And I would love to see more support on delivering the energy security we need. 
Interest rates are rising globally. That is a fact. And interest rates are a decision for the independent Bank of England. But I want to do all I can to help families across Britain. But the way we're going to help them is by delivering economic growth, by making sure we have the jobs and opportunities in Scotland and right across the UK. And what independent forecasters have shown is that following our intervention, economic growth is going to be higher than it would have been if we hadn't acted. And that is vitally important for the jobs, the opportunities and the livelihoods and helping make sure people are able to put food on the table. Thank you, Mr Speaker. The way navigation winds through the heart of Guildford and is a much treasured part of our local environment. I welcome the announcement by the DEFRA Secretary oh, last we week. Uh, 18 mind. minutes after 12 is the time. You're listening to James O'Brien on LBC. I think we may pause for a moment and then return with the post-match PMQ's PM. P- PMQ's PM? PMQ PM. PM, 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 PM. Yeah, again, I'm in this weird position of... I can't quite believe how awful this is. And yet it would appear that I mean, look, George Parker at the FT, political editor, Liz Truss, says she absolutely won't cut spending. She's got to find £43 billion pounds by the end of the month. Pounds. £60 I mean, billion. £43 pounds. Billion is the tax... tax yeah, of tax course, she's got to find £60 billion pounds by the end of the month. Theo Oshwood is here. <laughs> but she's just said she absolutely won't cut spending. And she, but she was quite careful in her answer to Keir Starmer. She said that's only over the medium term. <laughs> Yeah. So she could cut it in the long term. But yes, oh, she, I see. She, she, so, so, right. But the political editor of the Financial Times, a, a, a sort of famously yeah. unexcitable journalist, he's, yeah, he's so, um, says amazing scenes in the House of Commons. So, and so, his colleague Jim Pickard points out, we're now going to have to see how the financial markets respond to the trust argument, your quibble notwithstanding, that she won't be making any spending cuts after all. It's, I mean, it, yeah. Anyway. She's, got to, she's got to find... £60 billion, pounds, and that's why today they announced another U-turn, which was a windfall tax on energy companies, albeit not Shell and not BP, yeah. uh, on those producing nuclear and renewable energies. And she appears to, and George Parker and Jim, Jim Piccolo are right, she's, she's saying there, I'm not going to do it through public spending cuts. And she can't do it through public spending cuts because her own backbenchers won't allow it. And at the very beginning of PMQs, and we didn't quite catch this, she was asked a question about no-fault evictions. Now, Boris Johnson, he was elected on a manifesto to ban no-fault evictions on the behalf of landlords so that they simply can turf people out, and it affects many younger people who, of course, suddenly find themselves uh, out of their rented accommodation. Liz Truss and Kwasi Kwarteng were actually going to go back on that move, in a mo- which would, of course, support uh, landlords, making it much, keeping the status quo, making it easy for them to evict people. But after that question from uh, Graham Stringer, it appears she's now abandoned that move, and that would be a significant win for the w- former levelling up secretary, Michael Gove. Spooking the markets and increasing the cost of borrowing, increasing the cost of mortgages, uh, was almost certainly an act of gross incompetence <laughs> rather than malevolence. But going back on the commitment uh, to end no fault evictions is an act of extreme callousness. Can the Prime Minister reassure the 11 million private renters in this country that she will carry out the commitment to get rid of no fault evictions? I can. Julia Sturdy. Significant. Uh, Yeah, I mean... Far bit from me to gallop to Liz Truss's defence. Was it established that she was planning to get rid of it? Was one of those, it was one of those U-turns where you walk back into a hedge. Yes. But, I mean, was it on the record that she was going to get rid of it? Not it was, that I remember, no. No. So it was just they, they, they let it be known that this was going to happen. Everybody went, got very cross, and then they've undone it, and it's not going to happen. Yes. A bit like, what was the yesterday's one that was we, like that? We had well the forty-five p rate. They said no, that was a universal credit. One. That was a, the universal credit, credit one. Yeah, universal credit. So we don't know for sure yet. So I mean, I, I don't know what to but, say. But we do know if 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 if, if the prime minister and she made the commitment there that there'd be no spending cuts. Yeah. Then that would appear to rule out um, because Boris Johnson had factored in the fact factored in and Rishi Sunak had factored in. What are they going to the, do? Where's the money going to come from? Taxes but, or borrowing? Well, taxes means completely abandoning the mini budget. No. Well, you could either reverse another chunk of the um, mini-budget, which, of course, Keir Starmer is saying she should do with the corporation tax yeah. rate, which is... That's 18 w- billion. That's 18 billion, which is due to go up 
from 19p to 25p next year. And Keir Starmer's saying abandon that and you can get in an extra 18, you can get an extra yeah. 18 billion, but Liz Truss doesn't want to do that. So she's going to have to abandon it. I can't look right. Listen, because you know what happens when I think I'm losing the plot. Right. I, I derive enormous support and confidence from people who know more than I do. Okay, so, so here's who's... Alex White, ex JP Morgan. This is completely insane. Responding to Liz Truss, Jane Merrick of the Independent Rice, Liz Truss appears to have ruled out public spending cuts. Asked by Starmer to rule out public spending reductions, she says, absolutely. Then you go to, um, I almost hesitate to turn to, to I mean, everywhere you turn, they, they, they cannot be spending cuts, Liz Truss declares. Then she's going to have to abandon her mini budget tax cuts. That, or the markets crash spectacularly on Friday. I, I don't see what. Or she, the... or, she can, or she can do the, she can try a variation on it, which is what they've announced this morning, which is a Rob Peter to pay Paul. So you continue with the plan of the mini budget, but you find you raise the taxes from somewhere else. But then Liz Truss did say in the final leadership hustings that there'd be no new taxes, read my lips, which of course is coining a phrase off George H.W. Bush back in 1988 and Boris Johnson repeated it in 2019. See, I, I don't know whether you feel this. This is probably more for a podcast than a radio programme. But I, I'm lacking the vocabulary properly to report on the scale of what's happening now. I mean, they, 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 we, we've used up the word unprecedented. Uh, yeah, yes. I, I suppose. The Conservative benches were very quiet. That's something we can talk about. I don't think I've ever seen them that quiet before. Very She's only quiet. been, I mean, what's that, her third PMQs in the chair or, or her second? Uh, so that's the third. Right, and they've already gone silent. Her own people have gone silent. She's, she's, I, I, she's saying things that don't stand so, up. So, say, second. 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 She's saying things that don't stand up to the scantest scrutiny. I mean, not even, I mean, okay, here's a question for you. Uh, let's, let's get the phone lines open. 03456060973 is the number you need. Just tell me what you think of that. What did you make of that? Uh, I, because here's, the, here's, here's perhaps the, here's the mothership of my dismay, right? Mm -hmm. The mini budget contained billions of pounds worth of tax cuts, originally for businesses and the highest earners in the country, most yes. obviously. And, and there was all, there was the national insurance yes. uh, reversal and, of course, but, but the again, promise to reduce... I mean, you mentioned that. Labour voted against that. And now she's trying to curry, like, score political points by accusing them of being against it. I mean, it doesn't make any sense, Theo. Uh, OK, so you carry on, James. With, I won't interrupt you. OK. So that's that a veiled dig? No. Are you sure? Yeah. Oh. Sorry, I interrupted you. So, I've lost my thread now. This never so you... happened. No, I'm only joking. It's theatre. Don't worry. So the mini budget contained billions of pounds worth of tax cuts. Yes. And it also, as she said, contained help with energy bills. Yes. So public money mm -hmm. being used to help people pay their energy bills. So Which was going to be financed by borrowing. It's going to be financed by borrowing, but it's public spending. Yes. So that's spending money. Yes. And the tax cuts are rejecting money that would otherwise have made its way into the Treasury. It's saying, no, we're not yes. going to... So how are they linked? How can she claim that helping people with paying their energy bills is in any way linked to the tax cuts? Because they both involve money coming out of the Treasury. So within the same mini-budget... Yes. There was the announcement to protect... No, I know that, but you need to answer the question because it doesn't make sense. How can she claim, when she's asked questions about the tax cuts, how can she claim or even mention the energy what, what, bills help? Because the energy bills help costs the Treasury money and the tax cuts cost what, what the Treasury she's, money. What she's trying, yes, so what she's trying to say and the argument she's trying to make is that if you take the support for people with their energy bills, it's around £150 billion pounds, and it was part of quote-unquote, the same announcement with the tax cuts that were, that were announced in that mini-budget, which totaled £45 billion, yeah. pounds, actually went down to £43 billion. Pounds. And the frustration in number 10, and this is where they're saying, well, actually, it's not necessarily about the policy, it's about right. the messaging, is that everybody is talking about uh, so the she's tax just, cuts, yes, yes. but nobody's talking about our generosity and our... our, our our intervention when it comes Which to the energy markets. answer my question. That simply answers the question of why she's talking about it. The question of how are they linked, apart from being part of the same mini-budget, stands because they both cost... It's a, it's a bit like you yes, saying to cost. me, if we were married and I went out and bought a, a, a Lamborghini, yes. and you said, how the hell are you going to pay for that Lamborghini? And I say, don't worry, I've bought a Porsche as well. Yes. So, so my confidence, James, if you went out and bought a Lamborghini to do the car repayments on the Lamborghini, yes, yes, I'd, I'd be. And if I was like your partner, if partner, husband, 
So I'm there and I'm saying to you, James, you bought a Lamborghini and yeah. you've got 500, yeah. well, let's say 2,000 pounds a month repayments yes. on your Lamborghini. Yes. I'd be like, that's tough. That's tough. Yeah. So, so how are we going? What am I going to do to? And then you go, well, actually, I say, calm I'm down, about, dear. I've got, calm I've down. Got another, I've got a Porsche. So I've got another two thousand pounds to pay back the Porsche. Yes. It's insane. <laughs> so, so yes, there would be a there would be an issue about how you're going to repay it all. But that's or what she says. Gonna... So he stands up and he says to her, "How are you going to pay for the Lamborghini?" And she says, "Why aren't you talking about the Porsche I also bought?" That, yes, that's... Oh, it's even worse than I thought. <laughs> Half past 12 is the time. Amelia Cox is here with your headlines. 12.35 is the time. She is... Uh, this is um, James Ball, who is the global editor at the Bureau of Investigative Journalism. Uh, she's either raising taxes, cutting spending, or letting the markets panic again. There is no secret fourth option. Michael Savage of The um, Observer writes, Trust says she will absolutely not cut public spending. Gasps of disbelief in the chamber. Amazing stuff. I, I, none of it makes sense. She cannot pledge to all the things she's pledged. She just can't. They cannot simultaneously be sustained. I'm so relieved in a way, if that doesn't sound stupid, because when I was really reaching for some hyperbole earlier today, telling you how absolutely screwed I thought things were. I was, and I kept saying to you, conscious of the fact that, once again, I seem to be blowing my little bugle before everybody else. But my God, the bugles are queuing up now. Do -do 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 -do. Everywhere you turn, there's bugles. Because this does not make any sense. She cannot commit to no cuts in public spending and commit to what the experts say is going to cost a 60 billion quid in the context of tax cuts. So what on earth was she doing blathering on about the national insurance and the energy bills? Theo's explanation that she keeps talking about energy bills because she wants to get some credit for doing it works up to a point. The point at which it ceases to work is when you use the analogy of the Lamborghini and the Porsche. She's being asked how she's going to pay for her Lamborghini and she responds by saying, well, I've also bought a Porsche. This is nuts. I'm all... I don't know if I've ever quite crossed that Rubicon before. I don't think it's possible to argue with me about this. 03456060973 is the number you need if you want to prove me wrong. Jane's in Lingfield. Jane, what would you like to say? Hello, James. Hello, Jane. Um, I'm, a, I'm a Conservative Party member. Yes. Um, I spoke to you during the leadership campaign. I said it was a shamble. You did? I said it was going to be chaos. Yeah, I bet you're feeling I silly now, aren't you? I, I, I'm, feeling, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm feeling so sorry that I, I, I didn't have faith in, in, in the process. Um, I have never heard such a poor performance at parliamentary questions. I was going to say exactly what you've just said, which is, you know, um, ask, ask me, ask me whether I want to cover coffee, and um, I, I, I reply, "Well, I've, I've helped you with your energy bills." Well, yes. yeah, but I'm, you know, yes. cup of coffee, um, and it is it, it, complete irrelevance to the point of absolute embarrassment. Um, I also um, feel that you know, randomly coming out with, "Oh yes, I've got to remember, I'm, I'm attacking the Labour Party." Um, yes. Only score political points. Well, was actually. This is what politics is about. Um, you, you make your political case. You make your political argument. And you, you work with the argument that comes back to you. You don't, you don't just say, oh, that's a political argument. Um, oh, I don't mind a bit of bill. political point scoring, Jane. It can be quite entertaining it, and it might be a little shallow it, of us. But goodness me, it provides a little bit of light relief. But you're supposed to at least connect your foot with the ball if you're trying to score political goals. She, she, she was about half a mile away. I couldn't agree. And I am, um, you know, I, I constantly get asked, why do you stay in this party? I stay in this party because I am a conservative. Yes. I am a moderate one nation conservative. I believe in sound money. I believe in balanced books. I believe in a mixed economy that allows liberation while at the same time providing protection for those of, uh, in our society who need that protection, maybe temporarily, I respect maybe that. permanently. No, I respect that. So um, who do you point I to am, in the cabinet that shares that view of your of conservatism? No one. Not no one. one. She's chosen as she's chosen all uh, people who are loyal to her. She's done much the same as Johnson did. But Johnson, at least, 
and I am no fan of Boris Johnson, sure. but um, Johnson, uh, I voted for Hunt. I always vote for the wrong people, obviously. Well, the um, right people, uh, they just don't win. Well, I, mean, the, <laughs> I, I, voted for the, I, I voted for the losers now. You vote for the right Johnson people, against, but not but, necessarily in the right order. <laughs> yeah. At least remember, Johnson had a mandate yeah. from the country. If sort of. she had... Conti- the, it, well, he had an 80... He yes, had he had, had an 80-seat had an 80 majority. Seat majority. Yes, OK, we know why. Let's not go back there. But at least he, under our democratic constitutional rules and the rest of it, he had an 80-seat majority, yes. which he'd won. Um, square, if not fair. No, with a manifesto. Um, we're, we're, we're containing with pledges. Manif- with and, a manifesto. And she's now with abandoning those pledges with no mandate. I mean, by any and, available measure, yeah. this is off the scale. Yep. Exactly. And I had to I had to ring and say yep. that I'm... I promise you, I am not the only member of the Conservative Party, even the voted for her or not voted for her, who are completely appalled, jaws dropping. What on earth are we going to do next? Surely we have got to find a way of resetting, not her premiership, but the clock. We have got to go back in time. We've got to find a place where things were stable and work back to that position and she is not the person to do it and somehow i don't know how whether the men in gray suits still exist i don't know but somebody has got to remove her remove her cabinet and get back to sort of sanity I, well i couldn't hear, agree more hear jacob reese mogg yep. blaming the bank of England, saying oh it's all the fault it's interest rates i cannot believe well perhaps i can believe because i've never been convinced that he's the brightest spark no but he didn't the, the fact that he possibly doesn't understand why interest rates have gone up is truly terrifying. Well, it, I mean, as always with Jacob Rees-Mogg, is he being incredibly stupid or incredibly dishonest? I don't think there's a third option. <laughs> I, I, it's easier for me to do. It's, it's easy for me to do an impression of him, Jane. But you're almost as posh as he is, so you'd struggle to take the you'd, you'd struggle to take the Mickey in the way that I sometimes can. I'm posh. I have, well, I have a posh voice. Yes, okay, that's all I mean. Voice. That's all I'm referring. That's all that. I'm referring okay. to. Right? That's all I'm re- I can't okay. do. A, I can't. I, 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 thank you for that. And and I, you're the third Conservative member to ring in today, actually. So I, I think it's important to remember common ground or. What, what, what we have in common rather than what sets us apart. Although all three of you are in, well, not quite, actually. The, 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 the gentleman in Maidstone was a little bit more optimistic about the, the road ahead. I and Toby, um, the last chap to ring in before PMQs, are in complete agreement with you. This is un- utterly unsustainable. I wonder whether, was it Christopher in Maidstone? I wonder whether he's changed his mind after witnessing that utter debacle of a PMQs. Uh, or whether anybody has a different analysis of that analogy that I am characteristically smugly pleased with. The, 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 she was asked how she was going to pay for the Lamborghini, and she kept insisting that we talk about the Porsche she also bought. Kieran's in Hampstead. Kieran, what would you like to say? Yeah, hi. Um, yeah, a Conservative uh, a party member and a voter in the, in the leadership Who'd have uh, thought campaign. so many Conservative members listen to Mr Wokeman on LBC, Kieran? But here we are. I'm well, very touched. Well, I do. And, and, and I, the problem here is that what you're saying for the last certainly the last few weeks is 100% correct but mm. what I'm frustrated about is the people you're talking about in my mind do not represent what I imagine the Conservative Party to be or should be anyway, no that's um, fair enough I, I voted for the guy that, that made perfect sense uh, I was an economist it's Rishi Sunak and, and I was a bit blasé about the whole process because I couldn't believe that the rest of my fellow Conservatives would not vote for him and instead vote for a fantasy economics person who, who quite frankly made it quite clear in her campaign that she was all about fantasy economics and Rishi Sunak's whole campaign was based on the fact that I'm not the fantasy economics person I'm the what happened then you were you probably paying attention to it in a slightly different way than I was and I won't lie to you Kieran I nearly died of boredom about halfway through so what (laughs) happened how how did so many people who are these people your fellow members and why did they line up behind such a to my mind such an obviously fantasy based platform I think there was a, well, okay. So I, I maybe I'm I'm being a bit naive here because I've talked to a lot of my colleagues of mine who are you know sure. died in the blue Tories. Yes, none of them will admit. 
to voting oh, for Liz Truss. Right. So somebody must have done, right, um, for it to get in. But what I, I yes. expect, there might have been a bit of complacency because certainly in my mind, I couldn't think anyone in their right mind could not vote for Rishi Sunak in that two-horse race. I mean, he was the only one out of all the candidates actually had sensible costed plans. Uh, you know, OK, there were, there, were, there were tax rises involved in his plans, but, you know, it made well, sense. Well, maybe you right? hit upon it. Maybe it was that simple. Maybe you're... you're, you're I don't want to sound unkind, but maybe you're giving too much credit to your fellow members and, and they were responding like Pavlov's dogs to words like tax cuts. They don't think beyond, I will mention Brexit at this point, they don't think beyond the fatuous, meaningless, but outwardly attractive slogans. They're voting for the sugar rush. Tax cuts, yay! Not thinking about where's it going to come from, how's it going to be paid for, what impact is it going to have on the markets. We just like, and then she, uh, what I find astonishing is that then they got into power albeit on the back of a tissue of, 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 of nonsense. But they, they, they then behaved in a way that suggested they absolutely believed the nonsense that they were spouting during the, during the hustings. That's the bit where I lose touch with common sense. That's the bit where I struggle to keep up, Kieran. The bit where she... You, you and I can watch those hustings. We can listen to Sunak say, that's a fairy tale. We can nod sagely because he's obviously right. We can think, oh, she's clever. She knows it's a fairy tale, but she's playing the room she's doing a johnson she's she's you know the art of lying but then she got into power and tried to make the fairy tale come true well i mean i will disagree with you there to the extent Which that bit? well the first part when you were saying that you you made the assumption that uh, tory voters all wanted to vote for the sugar rush the fantasy for no, the ones rush that course. voted for her yeah but i i remember that there were polls undertaken a number of years ago uh, which gave the impression that the general public, and I say the general voting public, were in favour of some tax rises and expected there to be some tax rises off the back of the pandemic mm. and to keep the NHS funded. You know, it wasn't something that... I think people had accepted that it had to come. So yeah. from that point of view, I don't think that people suddenly looked at Liz Truss and said, oh, hold on a second, maybe we don't have to have Well, tax what was it then? What did well, she offer them then if it wasn't that? I, I feel, I, I'm, I'm loath to say this. Go but, on. I fear that you know our party and our party membership has been infiltrated um, by a core that I mean, I, like a lot of people that have voted Conservative for the first time. I don't think they are they're true Conservatives. They are. Yeah, but the members Brexiteers. are. The members are. What did the members? What did the members buy? What did she sell them? If it wasn't the tax cuts rhetoric, which was bogus, we now know. What did she sell them? What was she dealing? Well, I, she she was the closest uh, candidate to, to Boris Johnson. She was backed by Boris Johnson. That's the only thing that I can think of. She was backed by Boris, and there's still thousands, yeah, thousands of conservatives. Fair enough. Unfortunately, yeah, yeah. So it was still the cult. She was she was like this kind of yeah. after, aftermath of the cult. She was the uh, she was like Richard Cromwell. If you that's a bad end. It's not a bad end. Is it a bad end? Well, anyway, it makes me sound quite historically literate. But she was she was like uh, David Moyes after Alex Ferguson. I don't know what she was like, but she wasn't the real deal. She was just the nearest thing to the real deal. Yeah, good play. Kieran. It's 12.47. 12.51 is the time. Sadiq Khan there becoming the last public figure in the country to launch his own podcast. But it, it, it is actually quite timely. I, I suppose the search for good political news at the moment is, is quite urgent and quite important. And I appreciate if you're still a victim of footballification and you can never give credit to people who generally play for the other team or support the other team, then you're going to struggle with this. But that podcast that the mayor is doing as you heard about clean air it comes at around the time it's revealed that london's traffic congestion this is bloomberg reporting on what's happened in london since 2016 they can now measure the differences between 2016 and 2019 um three years ago the city introduced tough restrictions on heavily polluting cars and they've had a look at the impact pretty simply um the ultra-low emission zone has seen such a reduction in pollution that we are now comparable to some of the cities with the best record in this area. So here's the idea, okay? The legal limits. Londoners living in areas that exceeded the World Health Organization's legal limits for nitrogen dioxide... That's the gas that damages the respiratory tract in high levels and increases vulnerability to respiratory infections and chronic lung disease. Um, in, the, in 2016, there were 2 million people living in London with, in areas where 
the limits exceeded the World Health Organization's legal limit. By 2019, there were 119,000. I mean, that is, regardless of your political loyalties, that is such an astonishing piece of policy making that in a half honest media, it would be sung from the rooftops. Londoners living in areas exceeding the World Health Organization's legal limits for nitrogen dioxide dropped from 2 million in 2016 to 119,000 in 2019. London's air quality, which was far worse than comparably sized cities like New York or Madrid, this is by the one key measure in 2017, is now on a par with them. And of course, um, he's not done yet. That is one of the key areas where he continues to improve health and save lives. Um, to people pleased with my Richard Cromwell parallel, actually. Sort of trust gets into power on Boris Johnson's coattails and turns out to be a disaster. Alan goes even further with a very clever historical reference, tumble down trust. Um, Theo's back. Yes, because we've got another U-turn. Uh, let me off. guess. Let me guess. Da, da, da. Give me a clue. Um, leaflets. There was, uh, she's going to do shots. energy campaign. She's going to do yes. an energy campaign. There we go. Well done. You she had, like again, we said earlier this week she's going to have to use This is getting ridiculous now. So, I'm not even enjoying it. So Jacob rees the business secretary, came up with a £15 million campaign to try and help people with tips about how to cut their energy bills. One of the ideas was uh, turning off radiators in empty rooms, that sort of thing. Just a very simple campaign mm. to try and get help people to cut their uh, energy costs. That was blocked by uh, Liz Truss. The argument from the government, I think it was Graham Stewart, the energy minister, who came out and said, well, we're not the nanny state, therefore mm. we don't need to tell people how and to cut their are. energy bills. Now Guy Opperman, uh, the Conservative MP uh, for Hexham up in the North East, if I remember correctly, he's just asked a question uh, of Liz Truss and the Prime Minister's done another U-turn. Can I urge you to have a nationwide mail-out campaign to communicate what the government is doing to assess people on reduction of energy and more particularly have a reduction of energy campaign by the public service so that we don't go down the route of spending too much on consumption, we reduce the supply. Well, my, my, um, my right honourable friend is absolutely right and I know the Energy Secretary is working on a plan to help companies and individuals use energy more efficiently. We're also working on this across government. I was delighted to speak to my friend yesterday, and I hope we'll be able to start this going in number 10 straight away. Now, the urgent question from Rachel Reeves, which I was talking about, the Shadow mm. Chancellor, has just got underway in the House of Commons. Uh, Chris Philp, the Chief Secretary to the Treasury, has been answering that urgent question. It hasn't been going particularly well for Mr Philp. Chancellor of the Exchequer is in Washington uh, having meetings with the IMF and is a... Uh... which have been... <laughs> routine meetings have been long scheduled. Economic growth last year, the calendar year 2021, was the highest of any G7 country, 7.5%. And just yesterday, the IMF forecast that economic growth, GDP growth, this current year in the UK would be at 3.6%. Once again, for the second consecutive year, the highest of any G7 country. So our economy is in resilient uh, condition. So the Chancellor's in Washington having routine uh, meetings with the International Monetary uh, Fund and uh, the economy remains in resilient uh, condition, yeah. according to Chris Hill, the Chief <laughs> Secretary of the Treasury. It's and, all and, is and okay. as with Johnson's nonsense, that those, those numbers built upon how far we fell during, yes. during the coronavirus yes. pandemic and, compared to other co comparable economies. So. And I have had a reply from uh, Boris Johnson's person, by the oh, way. Yes. Uh, you were right. Yeah. It's no formal agreement with premium speakers. Told you, mate. Yeah, you see, that's good though. People, because people listening now have been in the heart of a scoop making machine, <laughs> and they've seen. So what they're, happens. they're saying there's no for, there's no formal agreement yeah. with premium speakers. Yeah, there won't be. You wouldn't sign. There might, I mean, unless uh, there might be an exclusivity deal, so he's not going to be punted for business by any other speaking age. But that's great for the people listening because they've witnessed how scoops rise and fall, you know, and, and, <laughs> and great journalists <laughs> chew the fat like this is like a Woodward and Bernstein. Musk. This is a Woodward and Bernstein moment. For there, there, there was, the there was a, a slight chuckle from uh, the former Prime Minister's uh, person when I, when I told him that 
uh, you were the person who you're the only person who uh, agreed with him, and lots of people were casting. There we go. There we go, James O'Hu, he said. <laughs> uh, Treasury Committee Chair Mel Stride has just said that Kwasi Kwarteng will have to row back on more mini-budget tax cuts. Yes, Mel Stride, um, uh, former Treasury Minister, knows his onions. Uh, last word, I think, to this tweet. Can you do us all a favour and announce your support for Liz Trust, James, so that we can be rid of her as quickly as possible? This is something. Do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. When I cautiously <laughs> offer up warm words about Conservative politicians, I do so sincerely, yes. albeit almost always mistakenly. But I, no, I can't no, be doing that. just the ones that have been kicked out. I can't, yeah, yeah, maybe. Some of them seem nicer in the rearview mirror, don't they, than they did when they were in the passenger seat. Here's Sheila Fogarty, passenger seat. Here's Sheila Fogarty, passenger seat. Here's Sheila Fogarty, passing to see. 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 Here's Sheila Fogarty.